this is Robin with Creative Two Time Mom, and today we're going to be talking about summer homeschool. So, welcome back to my channel. My name is Robin, and this is Creative Two Time Mom. This channel is all about homeschooling, parenthood, and thriving in the day to day. And today we're going to be talking about summer school plans. Now, we follow a traditional uh, school year calendar mostly because we work with a charter school, but I also have a high schooler who follows a traditional calendar. So we sort of take the same breaks that he does. I have to also be honest, I don't know if I could be a year-round homeschool mom. There are times, like November, February, <laughs> two of the longest months in the homeschool calendar where I think, hmm, I would really like to take a break right now. And then, sure enough, the school year calendar works around and we have Thanksgiving break or we have President's Weekend in February. So it ends up working out and I really enjoy having these summers off. I look forward to it probably more than the kids do. <laughs> it gives me a nice chance to reset as well. But just because we have 10, 11, maybe 12 weeks off this summer, I'm not sure, just because we have that time off there is such an opportunity for all of our brains to fall into just a lax mode and I don't want to lose the momentum that we have. I know that my kids will pick up projects along the way. I know that we will garden. I know that we will do some camping and some traveling. But I also really want to find ways to keep them engaged, particularly in math. Math is that subject that I feel needs to constantly be um, touched on throughout the summer. So I sat down this week and I made some plans of what our summer homeschool will look like, some of the goals that I have for the kids, some of the things that we don't always fit into our regular year and how can we make that work for the summer. So I'm going to talk about first of all my fourth grader moving into fifth grade and the plans that we have for him. Now I said math is that one subject that I really still fire on in the summer and feel like is important but I don't want to be so regimented about it so my ask for the summer is three to four lessons over the week so if we're going to the lake on Wednesday you might not choose to do math on Wednesday you might choose to double up on another day now through our school the kids test three three times in a year and they have a program called iReady. So we're going to use that to keep his mind engaged in math all summer. They teach a concept and then they test a concept and there's some practical hands-on problems as you're going through that as well. We're gonna stick with that. Typically in the homeschool year, he is using Saddle Oxford, which is a very traditional math curriculum. This is just a way of making it be a little bit more fun throughout the summer and really strengthening those concepts that he's gotten all year long as well. For reading, I think that that's also important, but I am very lax in the reading. Um, we go to the library once a week. For the most part, I let the kids pick out whatever they want. Now, there is one caveat to that. Our language arts curriculum this year was not as strong, and I was not happy with it, and I feel like there has been some regression. And so I am going to, each time we go to the library, I'm going to pull one book for him every week, and then he's allowed to fill in wherever he wants to beyond that. If it's graphic novels, if it's a lower level reading, that's fine, but I will have one book that I will pull for him each week. And I am creating a fifth grade reading list for him in the summer of books that he hasn't read before. I'm going to link below, I did create a, lot, a blog post a few years ago of some of our favorite fifth grade books, and so that's part of what I'm going to be pulling from this summer to just challenge him, keep him engaged, because um, I don't know about your kids, but mine, if they see a challenging book, they're always going to defer to the one that's a little bit easier, so I want to just kind of, just not put it so far out of his reach, but just push him just a tiny bit each week. The other thing that I'm going to ask him to work on throughout the summer is his typing. And this is one of those subjects that kind of goes back and forth. Yes, he does type papers on the computer, but not every day. And 
it is one of those things as homeschoolers that typing is not a complete essential in the lower levels, but I know it's one of those skills that when he goes to state testing or if he were to transition into a classroom, it'd be one of those skills he needs to have. However, how do you fit it all in during the school year? So we don't. I don't ask them to do typing throughout the school year, but I do ask them to do typing in the summer. And so we're going to be using Typing Club, and it's a free online program. It tests the kids on finding the correct letters, but also on their speed, and they progress up levels. They can earn stars. My kids love it, and since it's free and it's something that we can do from home, that's an easy one. Again, I'm going to ask for three or four lessons a week so that he can work around that if we're traveling, if we're going to see a grandparent or we're going to the lake. Uh, it doesn't have to be done that day, it just has to be done that week. Now for my seventh grader moving into eighth grade, this is my daughter. She does not like technology. She doesn't like to have the computer talk to her. She doesn't like to learn things. I have tried for years to transition her to teaching textbooks and she is not going for it. So we are just going to continue on in her Saddler Oxford math. For those of you who have worked in a classroom, you know that when you pick up a book like this, there's always more lessons than you could possibly complete in a homeschool year. I know Saxon typically has like 120 lessons, so it fits nicely into the 180 school year. A lot of traditional curriculum does not. In fact, we have hardly taken any days off this year and we still have three chapters to finish in here. I am calling it for the seventh grade year. It's done, it's finished. But because I want her to do math over the summer, this is what she has actually chosen to do. She wants to continue on with the textbook math. That's her preference. It's the way her mind thinks. She likes peace and quiet. Um, I can't imagine this girl in a classroom with other kids because she likes it quiet and she's sitting. So, Again, three to four lessons a week. We actually will not finish this over the summer, even then, because there's so such an abundance of information here. However, I am finding that she is really far ahead in math. In seventh grade this year, she was doing Algebra 1, basically. We're going to slow it down next year, pull back, go back to Algebra 1 again, just to solidify those concepts before high school, and because I don't feel the need to really push her quite that hard. So this is what she's going to be working on over the summer. As far as reading, I just kind of let her read because she's always pushing herself. I mean, she's read so many books that I haven't read as an adult. She's always progressing to that next reading level. Like I said, we go to the library once a week. We're already signed up for the summer reading program there, plus several other reading programs that I've been able to find. So I know she will be reading all summer. She too has her own account through Typing Club and she will be typing three to four lessons a summer. She does a great job with this. She's already had several summers where um, she's practiced this skill plus now she had a writing class this year so she's typed quite a bit and I feel really confident with her ability. She definitely types better than most people that I knew in college that were having to learn and write papers so I think she'll do great. The other thing that I'm going to ask her to do this year is we're going to go through the Good and the Beautiful's maturation uh, science unit. It's just one of those things that has not fit well into our homeschool year. It's not had a place where I could really slide it in and do it justice. So I want to take the time, I think it's about eight weeks long, so it's a perfect unit to do over the summer and it's going to sort of be mother, daughter, girl time, just the two of us going through this information together. And I also think, even if you're not a homeschooler, this is probably a really good resource for just having those conversations with your kids. I've previewed it, I've never used it, but from what I can see and how I sort of see us walking through this, it's a great jumping off point. I know it can be one of those conversations that can be difficult to have and a little bit challenging. So I'm hoping that by using this resource, it'll help us really engage and um, just have better conversations, better connections, better information in that area. So that's the more academic side of what our summer is going to look like. Of course, we're gardening. We will be baking. We're going to get back to doing sourdough again, which is one of the things we did in our homeschool year. 
I have started putting out a list. I don't know about you, but I will go into my curriculum area and I will find little projects that I picked up at uh, the Dollar Tree thinking, oh, I will use this project to go with this unit, or I will use this project to go with this unit, and we don't always get to them. So I've started a running list on my computer of different projects that I have tucked away that we can do. We have an owl pellet dissection kit that we didn't quite get to this year that I would really love to do with the kids. And I'm also putting away lots of recipes. There will be lots of cooking this summer. That's one of the life skills that I have been working on with all three of my children this year is having them come in and help with dinner once a week, learning some basic kitchen skills. So we'll be doing that as well. Of course, pulling from the library program all summer, lots of time at the lake, lots of time going to see family. We already have two, possibly three camping trips set up for the summer. So. I'm making sure that we include lots of fun, but also not having the summer slide in our math and maybe progressing a little bit in our typing and, and fitting in a few of those things that we don't always have room for in the homeschool year. Leave me a comment down below and let me know, do you year-round homeschool? Do you take the summers off? And if you do, do you do a light schedule or are you just hanging out at the lake? Cause I'm excited. <laughs> I think I've mentioned lake like 50 times in this video. <laughs> Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your summer plans are. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the subscription button on your way out. And we'll see you next time. Bye guys.